Yo, 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 we back at it again with another banger. Today's review will be on the legendary Lil O Can't Stop. We're gonna be talking about the history behind it, the production, the video, where we shot locations and all that good old stuff, how he wound up being signed to MCA Records and much more. So y'all know how we do it on this good old banging ass channel. Get your wine, your drinks, your snacks, your smoke. Don't forget to hit that bell to get notified every time your boy upload a dope ass review video. Subscribe, like, and share. Without further ado, let's get into this. Just a little history to go back. Around this time, Lil O, he, before he was a rapper, he was a trapper. Yes, Lil O, the legendary Lil O, he was a trapper. He has said this in many interviews. He was basically a kingpin in the drug game. Then events start to transpire and he had to get out of the drug game eventually. But throughout this whole process, he has always loved the significance of music. And of course, Screw was blowing up on all over Houston. His name was booming. And of course, you know, Lil O heard of Screw because everywhere you look, everybody's talking about this DJ, this dope ass DJ. So while Lil O he, by this time, you know, some events had transpired and Lil O had went to jail. He had to sit down for a while and he wrote his first rap in jail. Once he got out, somehow he wound up hooking up with the legendary producer Grizz, who was behind all the legendary uh, hits such as Toe Downs, Country Rap Tunes, Fifth War Boys, Buster Free. He was also on Blood Money. He was also on... Godfathers before it's too late. He was just blowing up around this time. And they uh, hooked up and Lil O was just spitting some stuff to him and he was like, damn, that nigga hard, bro. Go hands up in that booth, bro. See what we can do. So Grizz started playing different melodies and of course, you know, around this time, it, there wasn't like no Google or anything like that. But people were still using analog and ADATs and people were still using vinyls. So he was going through his vinyl collection and he wound up playing the legendary And Lil O was like, damn, cuz, man, oh, 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 man, you can't just play that nigga just, uh-oh, -uh, man, we gotta use that. And so he sampled the vinyl and he looped it basically. He looped it and then he went into his drum pad, not sure what type of uh, drum pad, whether it was the ASR-10, those many uh, drum pads, the MP3000 or something like that back then. Of course it was an older setup. And he started adding different claps and stuff like that and just adding little extra things to make it pop and unique. Once they finished this track, they uh, recorded some more tracks and they put the demo together. This was the demo that Lil O had did. A lot of this stuff really didn't get released like on like official album, it was just a demo. But for the real Lil O fans, um, you'll recognize that on, it was like a compilation that was dropped. The Lost Tapes, Lil O, My Struggle, My Hustle, if you look on that album, that's where the whole demo went. Of course, they cho chose different tracks from it, like uh, Rags to Riches, Future Youngster, Fat Pat, and Screw. Then they took Can't Stop, which being the, the, the main huge track, and they left everything else alone because everybody was so fixated on Can't Stop. So some time passed, Lil O had went to this pressing company back then I'm not sure which one it was but he went to got the demo pressed up and everything got like a little small demo cover with his name on it and the tracks on it and someone that little old knew knew Beyonce's father Matthew Knowles and now at this present time Destiny's Child was just not forming they wasn't really Destiny's Child at this point they were still young figuring out the ways but they could blow and everybody around third wall was you know they was hey man this is group nigga. 
these females, nigga, that could blow, man. They got these voices out this world. And how Destiny's Child wound up being on this song is because Grizz wound up taking the demo and giving it to different people. And word got back to a guy named Bilal who was at uh, MCA. At this time, he wasn't an A&R. He was just a writer for Word Up Magazine, which all the real hip-hop heads y'all know about Word Up Magazine. For those who don't know, you're too young. At this present time, he was not an A&R at the moment, but he was coming down here to Houston, and he was doing an article on Rap-A-Lot producers, and he was just basically doing like what all... Um, press writers do they come down to different locations and see who's the hottest artist what the hottest producers are of course you know they really don't do that now because it's internet and everybody can just post hit a little button and go worldwide Grizz gave him the demo and when he heard it, he was like god damn man nigga who is that and everybody was like that's his new nigga named Lil O. Man, that nigga could go, man. And he basically said that he's not really officially a part of MCA Records, but once he get back to NY, when he gets the job at MCA Records, he's going to come back to Houston and get Lil O and put him on and sign him because that's, that's some talent that you cannot miss up or pass and so of course he eventually became an a r at MCA Records and he came and got Lil O and signed him in 1996 now the Beyonce thing came into place because now he needs a manager and which his auntie knew Matthew Knowles and at this time Destiny's Child had just signed a deal with Columbia Records and Columbia Records was hot as hell by this time. And once they signed to him, everybody was still pumped over Lil O. You know, they have just freshly signed him and he already had uh, had this song in the making. It was just him on it. There was no singing, no none of that. It was just an original track. And everybody was just pumped. Man, this nigga Lil O is going hard, bro. We need to... Man, this this is hot. And some people at the label was like, man, there's, we got the perfect song to put the girls on. Destiny's Child, we got the perfect song to put them on. We can put them on this song, Can't Stop by this new artist, Lil O. And we can see how it go from there. And once they put Destiny's Child on there, Lil, well, actually first, they got Lil O to meet Destiny's Child and they became very close friends. If they would just be talking about their future, what they wanted to do in the future, and they was just imagine being young Lil O talking to young Beyonce, Latoya, Latavia, and Kelly about future things that they wanted to do and look at them now. And so, man, it's just amazing that you know they were young then then they wind up becoming so successful but after they had developed a bond put them in the studio did, did the recording session and everything they put the song out and it went bonkers everybody was buying this a this ep and it was just flying off the shelves and officially lil o the trapper was now a rap star People in the streets, they was like, man, hey, nigga, it's this nigga named Lil O, man. This nigga, he hard. It was like, nigga, not Lil O, the trapping Lil O. Then they heard uh, from Bracewood to what fell on down the Club Creek. Like, god damn, nigga, that's Lil O, the nigga, that nigga be on the block every day. Now he a trap, man. Man, he used to be on the block every day, nigga, getting it in. Now he a rap star. Man, this nigga he is unstoppable. And especially when Lil O eventually took the EP, the tape, to DJ Screw's house. He pulled up Big Ben's, 
bezatined out, fresh, creased, starchy dine. He went in there and just happened so to drop by on a, on a normal day. Gave DJ Screw the tape and was like, hey, I'm a little old. You know, hear my tape, you know, check it out, see if you like it. Once he popped it in, everybody started liking it. Everybody was bobbing their heads like, damn, this is hard. And he was just getting much props and everybody was just, everybody was fantasizing over Lil O the Rapper. And for the ones who really, really don't know, if you really listen to the lyrics, he's really telling you the story on the backstory of him being on probation, being in jail, his past struggles that built him into Lil O. But you got this banging ass beat and you could barely even pay attention to the lyrics because how banging, jamming the beat is. Like if you put it in the trunk, man, it's over with. And so now, Lil O, he has gathered the money to do his first video. And back in the back in these days, there were a lot of clubs. Everybody was alive. All the all the legends that had passed along now, they were alive back then. Lil O invited everybody to the set. He had uh, filmed the location at Jamaica, Jamaica, the old school club, Jamaica, Jamaica. And those are for the proper people, you know. But we call it Maker Maker. Lil O put the put the call on and. Botany came, Corey Blunt, I believe. Even in the video, you see Pat and Screw bobbing with Lil O. And you even see Destiny's Child O bouncing and body rocking. And some of the scenes, you see Lil O playing pool with Willie D. And this was at Willie D's peak. I'm not sure if he was already solo by this time. He might have already had did a Freaky Dicky with Pimp C. That might you know my dates might be off because he probably did that later on but he had willie d in there he had a whole bunch of slabs this one the slab culture was heavy heavy with the original swingers like everybody had brought their slabs out they they slant backs it was just a whole slab fest boys was dripping candy paint and back then this is when houston was houston there was a time to be alive like when you look at the video it's like one of those things you be like, damn, man, what a time to be alive. And so both of these parties, Lil O and Destiny's Child, they blew up so quick. Lil O was actually officially the first one to ever put Destiny's Child, Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, Latoya Latavia on BET. I wish I could find some footage from them performing it i'm pretty sure that, that they performed it a lot but there were a lot of like tapes and stuff so there were kind of maybe like some fans out there like some little old fans that got some footage on a vhs tape that haven't got their stuff mastered to dvd or something but you know just digitalized or something like that it would be good to see footage of them performing and soon after this uh little old started hooking up with the rest of the SUC. He would go on on later years after this to make the legendary album Blood Money, which I'll do an album review on that soon. But yeah, I hope y'all liked this review video as much as I did. Your boy is hitting with them bangers back to back. You know, the more constant, the more y'all gonna support. So stay tuned, keep that bell on, Subscribe, like, comment, and share to all your music friends who love this channel. Love music, period. And I'm talking about real music. And without further ado, for the Culture TV tuning out, your boy gonna always be here. It's gonna have that good quality content. It's gonna bring your eyes and ears to the real. And I'm out this joint. Much love to the legendary Southwest legend, Lil' O.